Lutheran Medical Center so I could find out um, why on the day that I was arrested for allegedly making a terroristic threat against a fucking judge, uh, why when I was in a bookings and complained of stomach cramps and stomach pains due to the drinking water in the bookings, why when I came to this hospital did they give my blood work results, my genetic uh, results, my urine test, my blood test, why did they give all of those documents to um, the correction officer, or the court officer actually that arrested me? How did she get a chance to get my medical records and to see them and to view them? What happened to HIPAA? We're gonna find out. Excuse me. Now, what, what floor is on public relations or, or patient relations? Patient relations is right here, but they closed. They just closed at 5. So what are those people waiting for? No, no, no. She's 243. Uh -huh. It's on the side there, a door that's okay. there. Okay. And there's no one there at, at this time? I mean, you not, but... Okay. I'll see. I'll see. Yeah, because the hospital still has so much people in it. Relate, you know, patient relations should still be open. Yes, thank you. So, Tell um, me, how can I help you? So, okay, so I came, um, these are records that I got um, from my last visit here. Um, I had to get these after I was released from custody because I came here as an arrestee. Okay. Um, I, um, Do you mind if... Oh, wait, not because not, oh, okay. it, it's personal records. Oh, okay. um, so I was, I was arrested, oh, of course. I was okay. brought here by court officers. Okay. Um, and the reason why I was brought here is because I had drank the water inside of the um, central bookings jailhouse where you okay. go to see the judge okay. and my stomach started to cramp very very bad and okay. I couldn't take it anymore so I came um, uh, asked for medical assistance they took two hours to come back to the cell and actually assess me I, I told them that I needed assistance that's in central bookings, that's in central bookings. Okay. so after okay. the two hours I had to wait which was this in Manhattan? Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn okay yeah so I had to wait another hour for them to then come and take me in an ambulance when I was um, being brought out, they didn't assist me. I told them I couldn't walk because my, my stomach was cramping mm -hmm. and it was hard for me to walk. They did not give me a wheelchair. Okay. Um, I asked them if they could assist me, hold my arms or something and help me walk because I, I was feeling faint and I couldn't walk. Um, they didn't help me. Outside of the bookings, when you leave the jail area, the secured area, and you're outside in the parking lot, going to the street, going to the van, going to the ambulance, there's a huge ramp okay. that the incline is very steep, or the okay. yeah, the incline is very steep. You were on the corrections at that time, or yeah, just I was, NYPD? I was in, a correction. Correct. No, 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 NYPD. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, I asked to be helped up that ramp. They didn't help me. Okay. I was shackled, my feet were shackled, my hands were behind my back, and I couldn't walk, and it wouldn't even help me up a, a, a incline this steep. It's really yeah. literally that steep. It was raining outside, drizzling, so they wanted me to get on the back of the ambulance. Mm -hmm. There's a metal grate, like a, a step-in grate, and then you go inside of the back. It's like a metal, right by the license plate, it's like a, a metal stepping board. Mm -hmm. And that grate gets very, very slippery when it's raining. Yeah. So I ended up slipping 
and injuring myself more because no one helped me for the entire time that I was asking them to help me. And um, I, uh, so I ended up jamming my finger and, and like um, j damaging my wrist. Okay. So when I got to the hospital, I just wanted to, um, initially I just wanted to deal with the issues of my stomach. Yeah. But then I had another issue, which is needing an x-ray because my finger felt really bad. I didn't know if okay. it was broken, yeah. um, dislocated. I don't, I'm not medical like that, so yeah. I didn't know, but I asked if, if I could be seen for that. So when I first came in, they gave me, um, they drew blood and they took a urine test, told me what they were doing, that the results would come back, it'd take some time. I also told them of my wrist and my finger being messed up, so they scheduled an x-ray. Okay. So I was um, on the bed, a cuff to the bed. They reeled me inside of the emergency room, the x-ray room. Um, I had a big beef with the correction officer, she, um, the court officer. She's a female. So when, when it was time for her to unlock my wrist, I think it was this hand. When it was time for her to unlock my wrist from the bed, she um, jerked my hand really hard mm -hmm. trying to get the keys. I, there was no need for her to handle me like that. And it was, I believe it was just to exacerbate my, my pain. So I said, I said, Miss, please, please do not do that. I, I, same thing I said, don't do that. Um, you don't need to yank my hand to, just to turn the key. And when I was done speaking, she went back to doing it, and then she yanked my hand again. Mm -hmm. Very, very hard, to the point where I felt extreme pain in my hand, so I yanked really hard from her, just to protect myself. The key ended up breaking inside of the cuff when I yanked. Mm -hmm. She started speaking very loudly and said to the x-ray, or whatever you call those guys, that, um, that I'm not doing the x-ray anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that she had the clearance or the medical um, ability to tell me when I'm not, or to tell any medical professional here when I'm not, or if I'm not gonna receive a, a medical procedure. Mm -hmm. she, she literally said that he's not doing it no more. He just tried to hit me. The x-ray technician was right in the room. He was right next to me, mm -hmm. waiting for her to take the cup off, so he saw the whole thing. She try, who tried to hit you? The, the no, I, no one tried to hit me. Oh, okay. She said I tried to hit her. Oh, okay. And that was her reasoning for um for stopping for stopping the, the whole process. And I okay. I tried to speak to a supervisor. No one would help me here. Um, I just had a very very bad time here because um, I didn't understand why that happened. How could someone a court, a court officer stop a medical procedure? And especially if I didn't do anything to stop that, and I was only protecting myself. Um, a, like about an hour later, uh, a woman, I don't know if she's a supervisor, but somewhere in the emergency room there, she came to me and asked me if I wanted to sign discharge paper. I said, uh, absolutely not. I'm not agreeing to be in discharge because I'm, I'm not going to leave without, because um, no one had addressed the issues with my stomach. They said they was going to do tests. No one addressed those issues. What did I come here for? Why, did, why was my genetic code and my blood and my DNA, that's so important with my stem cells and, and all my types of cells and my, my my whole genetic report is in one ounce of blood. Why did this hospital take my blood, take my urine, mm -hmm. and allow a court officer to stop me from getting a medical procedure and then ask me to be discharged? Yeah. So I can I ask you a question? When they were giving you the discharge, they asked you to follow up, because usually some, whenever there's certain tests that were done, they will ask you to follow up to for you to get the results in outpatient setting. I'm not sure. I, I would believe she would have said that if it's procedure, mm -hmm. but it seems as if no one was following procedure that day. So I can't really remember if she had told me that. She asked me if I wanted to sign off, mm -hmm. and I just I went you ballistic. No. I went okay. ballistic because I couldn't understand after all of that that you're now going to discharge me with no treatment, no help, no assistance with my medical issues. Mm -hmm. So of course I refused, and I started like screaming very loudly mm -hmm. just to get my voice out so people can hear so someone can come and help me mm -hmm. no one helped me the same woman about 30 minutes later maybe another was hour she later like a nurse or a doctor? she didn't have any uniform on she had regular clothes on she was an african-american woman oh, um yeah. mm -hmm. but she had came the same person had came a few um moments later uh -huh. and um gave the medical all the medical records this what i have in my hand to the correction officer or to the court officer I, I immediately questioned her and I asked her, why are you giving my lab results with all my personal cell blood? I'm going to write notes, okay? Yeah, please. My, my, my personal medical genetic information, why are you handing that off? It's a correction officer. I know I'm in their custody, but if you're not going to give me the records, keep it until 
I can come back and get it myself. Don't give it to a third. Was another. it medical records or was it discharge paper? It was these records. It was my results. My results. They gave them a full package of my results. So first, the x-ray was stopped by this court officer yes. or correctional officer. Correctional officer, yeah. Most likely it was a correctional officer. No, 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 no. It was a court, court officer. officer. It happened okay. in court, yes. X-ray was stopped by this correctional officer. Court officer. officer yes. When when was this that they come in? When you um, this was actually last year. I I've been dealing with so much since then. Okay, and this was last year on what time? Um, around like July twenty first. I was arrested July twenty first. July twenty first, two thousand sixteen. Sixteen. I believe I came the next day. Yeah, I possibly came the next day on the twenty second. Uh, uh, you were not given not given results. Yeah. of blood work blood and, work and your and analysis and, and no um no follow-up information or nothing i know mm -hmm. it probably came with the discharge papers but i'm not gonna consent and sign that because of course you know that's a contract so, I'm so not gonna is sign it for permission not to give in the blood and urine test i'm gonna say that uh they wanted to discharge you without you mm -hmm. in, they wanted to discharge you without discharge you without receiving proper medical care, would it be? I guess, yeah. Okay. Care and they did give you uh, discharge papers. No, they However, did not. They, they attempted, they attempted, to, attempted give, to give it. Yeah. They just attempted to give you, but you refused because you didn't feel like you were ready to go at No, that point. no, 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 because I know I did not receive the medical treatment okay. that the discharge papers would indicate I okay. received if I signed it. And following this, following this thing, they end up giving these papers to the CO office. They the, give medical records. You believe that medical records were given to them? I, I know. Uh, it was inside of a mex medical expedite package. Because those are the words that I saw on top of the stack of papers the lady was holding in her hand. Medical and, expedite papers? Yeah, I guess. That's what it said on the, on the first page. Okay. All right. What's the best number I can reach you? Um, All right. So... Based on what you told me, so you went to the EDA, uh, you were discharged, and then you went back into their custody, I'm assuming. Well, I wasn't discharged, I was taken. You were taken, okay. Um, what I want to say, uh, anything else? Um, so what would you like us to do for you? I, I, um, that's a very good question. Um, I would I would like to find out what records were actually given to the to the court officer okay. if if that's ever possible I don't know how you guys will um, get this information back to me if I'm even privileged enough to, enough to get that type of information but I want to know what records they have because there's no way for me to to find out whether I have to call corrections yeah. you know, court or I don't you know okay. like that's such a so did you eventually proceed with whatever procedure that we're doing to you did they ever no. did they ever what happened I was, after, I was in jail what after that you went to jail for like after that they would take you back to booking they Is took that what me happened? back to the bookings and then I went to Rikers for, you went to for Rikers. days okay. yeah okay uh can I ask something? Yeah. Um, what delays are you coming a year later? Um, no, I actually didn't um, wait this long. I came here before and I spoke to in like an Asian man. I don't know if he's still here, but no, nah, nah, he's not too old. He's like a middle-aged yeah. Asian man. I told him the same thing I told you. No one contacted me. Really? Positively. Okay. Um, and, and in addition to me coming before what um was holding me back is um, me dealing with ptsd mm -hmm. um anxiety depression and major depression and adjustment disorder mm -hmm. um due to police brutality and how much times i've been falsely arrested so it's really hard for me to come yeah. out in the street no, 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 to, right. to and deal with cops to yeah. go i don't even want to be ask, in when did you come in and spoke to the chinese asian guy i don't this, I know this was last year last, last year, year a few months after it had happened but last year oh okay yeah. so well he, i mean i did have an asian employee here yes. um and i'm the new manager for the department mm -hmm. so he's no longer here but yes. what i can do for you is do a full investigation of all the concerns you have brought up because it's definitely like i don't know if you need any type of verification i do have the court papers that would indicate that i was arrested that day no i i don't need that because usually when we when somebody comes in we notify the way you came in if yeah. you were brought in by ambulance yeah. if you were in by the police arrested, custody yeah. that that's that's what do you need is. any more identifying information of no, mine, so like I think social just, or date of birth date of birth give me the 
So we can definitely see if we did things wrong, if there was any areas we missed, and you know, try to find out what information was given to them. Mm -hmm. If it's possible, it, it is a year later, so I'm not sure if everybody will recall, but mostly, yeah, everything is yeah, documented in a medical record, chart. Yeah. yeah. So um, we'll follow up. We'll do. We'll keep in touch with you. We usually do for mass investigations. Yes. You'll get correspondence and email answering to con concerns. Thank you. And um, the the most important thing is um, not to sound cliche or like um, you know, so goody goody. But I hope something like that never happens to someone else. I know, uh, and I agree with you because I mean, it, it is different, and I think um. Uh, you know, all patients should be treated equally, regardless if you're under custody or not. I, I know the police kind of have a certain type of energy yeah. when they come in here. It's like, it's just like how they can walk into Dunkin' Donuts or a place that doesn't have an, a public bathroom and they use a public bathroom and they mm -hmm. get free donuts. Like, they just come and they do what they want, but something has to change and hopefully um, mm -hmm. us speaking would, would help them. Sure. Thank you very much. No problem. And thank you for seeing me. Let me give you my business card. Okay. I am the, the head of the department. Thank you. So mm -hmm. we'll conduct a full Ms. investigation. Criollo. Criollo. Yes. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, because yeah. I was like walking out. I was like running to. No, I'm glad. Sure. I came right at the right time. Um, Thank you very much. No Ms. problem. We'll keep in touch, okay? Thank oh, it's actually this way. This way. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, so all my YouTube viewers, all my people, um, just understand that all I'm doing is trying to expose these guys. All of them. All of them are trained crazy. Even hospital security are all trained crazy to violate people's rights. So um, this is what my channel is about. Please don't forget to subscribe, like my videos, especially... Um, Especially, like, let me just cut that out. Especially clicking on the ads and things like that. That'll be dope. Thank you for the support, everybody. I'm still dealing with those four cases. As all my um, descriptions say, 12 cases, 12 arrests since 2013. Eight of them dismissed from my own work and just them understanding how bullshitty their case is. Um, four more open. I took a plea because the shit that they do to everyone um, fuck your mind up and uh, make you so damaged and waste your life and take you away from your family and all that stuff. Since they did that shit so much for so many years to me, I finally buckled. Never buckled until then. Um, but... They uh, are supposed to allow you time in between them um, accepting your plea and them sentencing you. And that time is to allow you to file any motions or to do anything to safeguard your rights in between that time. And that's exactly what I needed because I wanted to take my plea back. And since they sentenced me the same day, um, that's kind of difficult now. So... That's what I'm waiting on to see if they're going to take back the plea. And yeah, let me stop talking. You already know. Thank you, everybody. Bless.